that's yeah, honestly, it's, honestly it's, like, uh, that's just like we came to talk about something else, but that is actually incredible. That's, just everybody needs to hear that. Yeah. yeah. And his thing was he would have encouraged them to be critical thinkers, not to just accept everything yeah. you hear, right or wrong. Yeah. Think things through. Well. Today we have good friends of Sheena, myself, Thomas and Trey's Lenahan, who have five. But it's not Thomas. So. So, Joseph and <laughs> Trey. <laughs> Sorry. Best friends. Today we have great friends, our best friends in life, and they are <laughs> Joseph and Trey's Lenahan. We should have our name tag. <laughs> And and uh, they're let, let me qualify. Friend, Thomas is <laughs> Thomas, Thomas is on the board. Thomas is yeah, on the board. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they're they're living in in Glanties. We knew them before, but they got married. And uh, we're going to chat about holy holidays. Um, guys, you're very welcome to Break and Bread podcast. Thanks, Thank folks. You. <laughs> you are very welcome, and lovely to see your lovely children. Next door. I hope they're still alive, but I'm sure they will be. <laughs> <laughs> It'll definitely put the soundproofing to the test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. It's actually been a while since it's just been, well, since we got away from the kids. Yeah, <laughs> the things you have to, to do. do. You yeah. have to go yeah. on a podcast. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So we're going to talk today about holy holidays, but before we do, we're going to ask you guys, how did you meet? Because we were there when you guys met. And we want to hear from your perspective. It's a good story. It's a great story. <laughs> Joe's <laughs> from Cork. Trey's from Donegal. Um, yes. Uh, I, uh, yeah. How do you... go from... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll embellish it. So, um, <laughs> so um, I suppose I was at a stage in my life before um, we met. Um, not to get too heavy too quickly, but... I was kind of, I was kind of living a kind of a double life almost, you know. So I have a brother, a priest, um, Father Jim Lenehan, who's, uh, thank God, been a great rock uh, in our lives, really. Mm. So Jim would have taken us on pilgrimages when we were younger. Um, We would have been to Medjugorje when I was 19. Um, We'd World Youth Day in Canada when we were younger. Um, But so... Um, I'll just get you to speak in. No, you're fine. Joe. Yeah. So I suppose before before Trace and I met, I was in my early twenties and had been, you know, going out a lot and living the the party lifestyle, and and then I'd have so that was one life, and then the other life was going on pilgrimages, maybe with Jim. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I liked the two of them. Mm-hmm. Do you know, yeah. it was like, you know, I liked going out with the lads and partying, and, and that was fun. But it was something I wasn't really comfortable with in mm. one part of me. And I enjoyed going to the pilgrimages. Uh, I felt there was something being being met there, mm-hmm. this peace, and it mm-hmm. felt good. But I found it kind of boring or something, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And that's totally okay. Yeah, so yeah. There, there, there was this, there was this, these two things going on. Uh, so it was that year, it was 2011, and... The lads were going to, I don't know, Ibiza or somewhere anyway. Mm. And I was like, you know what, that's not going to end well. So I was on to Jim mm. and I said, are you going here this summer? Just have an excuse to mm-hmm. not cut on that road. And he hadn't actually, he kept his summer free, which he usually doesn't do. And he said, will we go to World Youth Day in Madrid? Um, and that was it. And I remember meeting yourself and Brian and Anna. That's right. And uh, the next day then we met the O'Callaghan's But that was a great week for me Because um, For me The two were together um, Like we had so much fun that week mm. And I remember I had I had one pint mm-hmm. You know And I laughed so I remember laughing so much mm. With Trace and Her sisters And brother Yeah the crack was 90 You know in, in Madrid And uh like that, I wasn't used to having that much fun without yeah. having had 10 pints. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know? And, and for me, that was like, okay, this is cool. This is where it's at. Now, typical, Trey's was going out with somebody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know, the first girl I meet that, you know, is in her fate that I'm attracted to. 
and that is great crack. And Jim used to laugh because I told a joke on the holiday. I don't know how did she. Please don't tell it here. <laughs> <laughs> terrible, is it? Yeah. We call it Johnny the Hen, and it's a bit rude. Do uh, you want uh, to tell no, it? No, no. <laughs> no. I tell it everywhere, but I won't do it here. But Trey's really laughed at it, you know. And when when Jim was talking about Trey's afterwards, and we might have been talking about other potential suitors, and he'd say, "Yeah, but would she have laughed at Johnny the Hen?" Yeah. You know, and that was like the the bar to do with someone that yeah. was uh, that we just had that connection. Yeah, to yeah. the crack. Yeah. So yeah. we met up then again in in November. Uh, we were up the country, myself and Jim, and soon after that, then we started dating. Mm-hmm. So that's how we met. Mm. That's my mm. version of events. Trace, do you have a ver- a different version? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose coming from the perspective of I was dating somebody that wasn't in the faith for a long time, mm-hmm. and nothing really ever rocked the boat. There, it was just I kind of thought this is okay as long as they're respectful of my morals and respectful of my faith. Um, but uh, yeah, I suppose there was a, a void there, a significant mm-hmm. void there in terms of, again, it felt like a double life. You were going on pilgrimage. At that stage, I'd applied to do uh, to work in England as a lay chaplain. And there were all these elements of my life that I couldn't share with this person or I was hiding. I felt like I was hiding my faith and hiding who I was. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was becoming, I suppose, more and more of an issue um, as the years went on and yeah, went out. I don't. I, I had been on pilgrimage many times with my family, um, but yeah, I suppose I didn't really know what to expect from World Youth Day. I hadn't been to something like that before, um, and we weren't really enthused in that. We were kind of looking forward to go back to Lourdes or Medjugorje or somewhere we had been before, and um, we. I think maybe it was again twenty four hours in, and we were kind of that adjustment period of like, what's this like, and. You know, there was no showers for the women you're on the floor. I remember poor little Anna, like she was no age and she was thinking, oh my goodness, what have we got ourselves in for? And then I think it was when you joined day two and um, it was a it was a weird thing. It wasn't just a case of like, I saw Joseph like come and approach us with Father Jim and, you know, you just make instant judgments and, you know, I always tease Father Jim, but he was coming along and his arms were so long and he was wearing short pants <laughs> and I was like, no, I, I these aren't my kind of people and... There was something about Joseph come along. I was thinking, there's something about this guy, you know. And it wasn't even just an attraction. There was something about a uh, familiarity or a sense of like this person, you know. I couldn't stop kind of taking him in. Mm. And I had that experience all week where like that we were just laughing so, so much with, with my siblings and it just being so easy. Um, and I suppose when I left World Youth Day, I was very conflicted. Um, uh, I, I had actually been to confession during the week. And it was the first time I'd kind of said, you know, um, I was kind of discerning, um, am I with the right person? And I remember the priest just said, you know, you just deserve to be with someone that really loves you. And I thought, that's a bit of a nothing statement, you know? Mm. And I came out in kind of floods of tears. And um, I do remember I was praying a novena actually to St. Joseph that at that time. Mm-hmm. And I think that was my ninth day. And I remember coming out and looking at a statue of the Holy Family and it just really clicked for me. Uh, it was, I suppose, meeting Joseph was part of it. But I think even before we were together, I kind of realized that, you know, I just needed, you know, I know different people have different journeys and different mm-hmm. stories. Mm-hmm. But there was a humility in that moment where I realized I needed somebody like St. Joseph in order to get to heaven. I need mm-hmm. a good man and I need a man that is in his faith. And I just remember thinking, I just really wish I... I, I just was praying, I suppose, from the bottom of my heart that I would meet somebody and feel worthy of somebody mm. that was um, solid in their faith, but just realizing I really, really need somebody that's going to help me to get to heaven. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and, and um, I suppose as we went back to our, our own lives and we didn't really contact each other, but um, I certainly had felt, gosh, you know, more fun. And again, this was somebody who was seeing the real me, me with my family me um with my you know with um, your religious family with my religious exactly. family and loving us as we were yeah and being comfortable and and laughing um and that was just a big part of it and then when you came up to visit in Donegal that's really when it hit home because it wasn't just World Youth Day and the excitement mm-hmm. of there this was somebody then that was in my family home and seemed I like he we should were be there. there. You were there. We yeah. were there. You were there. Indeed. And and a, another part of the puzzle, because again, I think it was that day 
well, I realize, well, this person's now come to my home Mm -hmm. and I can still, it's not the experience of the place. It's the experience of the person um, and how you feel with them around your people. And, um, but I, I remember your family were a very significant part because I was at that stage in my twenties where you're thinking very much about your own faith journey, but you're not really thinking down the line. And that was a day where I went from being like a one of seven children to looking at yourself, Sheena, with seven mm-hmm. children and going, oh my goodness, that's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think as a child, you don't really know how much you should look up to your mother, yeah. you know, but I, I think that day I realized, gosh, this is really beautiful. This this is a dream I didn't realize mm-hmm. before now, like what a big dream and what that was on my heart and seeing you that day and I was thinking, you know, I, I just want somebody that wants that. And mm-hmm. I don't want to be apologetic about it because I just think it's so beautiful. Oh and um, I remember your lovely, lovely kids in our house pottering around and the little jokes. And um, and I think you turned to me at one point that day and you said, you're really good with children, which is something I don't think wow. anybody, uh, it's certainly not a yeah, male, had ever. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> Men ever were writing down. <laughs> <It's slain. laughs> yeah. You're very good with children. <laughs> did you just smolder when you did that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my goodness! Yeah, but yeah. it was just—it was such a combination of things. And for me, I didn't realize that Joseph had feelings for me. We weren't in contact, but at that moment, I realized: look, this maybe even this person is here to let you know that look, God does want more for you, mm-hmm. and He wants your dreams to be realized. He wants you to get to heaven. He mm-hmm. wants you to be as holy as you possibly can be. And you need to be with somebody like that, that sees you, your soul, as well as, you know, who you are intellectually and as mm. a person, like the, somebody that really sees you. I think yeah. we could go yeah. on now. After yeah, that honestly, honestly, it's like, uh, that's just, like uh, we came to talk about something else, but that is actually incredible. Yes. Everybody mm. needs to hear that. Yeah. 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 But yeah. that was a lovely thing you just said there about. Now, don't look at your wife when Sorry. you say that. Sorry. <laughs> 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 you, you have to talk okay. to the mic and point yeah. to her. <laughs> uh, I look at Tony and talk to Chase. <laughs> Um, what did you say there about looking up to your mother? Or you don't. That, that was a lovely line. Yeah, when you're. Yeah. What was that again? What, you when you're re- a child, you don't know how much you're going to admire your mother. Yeah, is it? Yeah, yeah. All your life mm. reference them, and mm. but sometimes seeing another mother. Yeah, I didn't similar know to that. your mother. Yeah, yeah, yeah and like you have a lot lovely. of my yeah. Gosh, if I can be likened to your mother, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, amen. Yeah. This is a great lady. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the power, just the power of example mm-hmm. and at different mm-hmm. stages of your life, mm-hmm. you know, it, mm-hmm. it, it, somebody can really resonate with yeah. you and what they're doing. And mm-hmm. I like that, just realizing there's a dream. And again, I say there's just so many women out there, um, very, very happily married people that aren't in their faith. But they're amazing women. Mm. They're women that have always been able to fully be themselves. They have never been hiding part of themselves. Whereas I just, I've, I've kind of realized about myself that if I wasn't with somebody that, you know, really celebrated that part of me, I would have hidden it and I would mm-hmm. continue to hide it. Mm-hmm. So it was, it's make and it or break. It would have been hard. It would have been hard. Yeah. That's pretty profound. Yeah. 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 I can can I interject Sorry, here now? I yes. think if Breen was here, he would say he had a hand in this as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Totally. So he he he. he <laughs> Sorry, go on. Yeah. Go on, Tony. I want to hear from you. Well, it, it's uh, it's actually really interesting because we could. Jim, Father Jim, told me that he, you know he has his younger brother there and he wanted to get away from this holiday and and Ibiza and whatever and sure this is you know you never know uh, and whatever. So we could see the connection between the two of you. There were three of us, me, Brian and Anna. Sheena stay, very kindly stayed at home with the rest of the kids and allowed me to go to World Youth Day with our two, two eldest. And we ended up in your group and we saw you meet. We saw you spend so much time together and it was beautiful. It was it was actually inspiring. And then to hear that you were dating somebody else, it was just like, <laughs> oh, like really, we, we wanted this thing to work. <laughs> And so when we heard that Father Jim and Joe were coming up to Donegal, to to Glenty's no less, we're like, maybe this is this is going to happen, you know? Because it it was like we're we're looking on, and and then there's Brian, of course, a, a, who has no filter, had no filter. He's, wor- he's working on it. Yeah. He's our eldest, yeah. and and he, it, Brian was there. You two should start dating, like I, as bold you as that? you like. Was yeah, that it? Went, was went, that went, in? I think w- were we at a, a meal? Yeah, yeah. I and was that. he sitting between or beside one of us? And it, it was it more kind of along the lines of, 
is there something going on here <laughs> or something like that yeah yeah and just sitting there kind of like huh? be quiet brain sort of like, <laughs> little like, boy but now we can tell him he was right I, yeah <laughs> i remember i remember i remember brain saying that actually as clear as it was yesterday and yeah. i was here you were there and brain was there yeah. and he said is there something going on with the two of you uh you might have been just beside yeah him yeah would have been but i remember feeling very comfortable yeah in that awkward situation yeah, yeah. I remember thinking like course he would think that mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah. all yeah. knew yeah. <laughs> there was something going on even yeah. though yeah so it was interesting yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and of course we were having meetings about the two of you yeah me, <laughs> me and father jim yeah. <laughs> it was like what do you think <laughs> oh, <God>. yeah. <laughs> and how long are you married now 10 years in november Ten years. i'll let you wow. off the hook there <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah what? good on Emily? you good on yeah. you and five children beautiful children yeah an inspiration. Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. They're really Thanks happy God. kids. Thank God. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, I can't, I, I can't remember your third child's name. Anna. 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 Oh. Again, I remember little Anna out there. Such a beautiful yeah. child. I'd always loved the name. My granny was Anna. Yeah. Mm. But she was another little influence because I remember saying that to your daughter, Anna. Yeah. Part of the reason my Anna is Anna is because uh, of her. Oh, that's yeah. so nice. That would mean oh, a lot to Anna. She's a lovely yeah. girl. Yeah. Anna, Anna just got was married. sitting on your knee in there and she's the biggest smile she's oh, just so happy yeah such a happy child you don't yeah. see a lot of children just sitting smiling and <laughs> i know yeah super happy yeah oh, like, our anna, yeah. like yeah. our anna exactly yeah. yeah yeah so do you want to lead on from here sheena <laughs> <laughs> don't you love the way he does that <laughs> <laughs> well, i suppose what we're we we thought we would talk about is holy holidays but like they're not they're not holy holidays at all it's that uh, transition from like family holidays going somewhere popular and you know holiday destination. As to an example, well, Ibiza, say for example. Well, yeah, maybe not Ibiza, but you know, like we've holidayed in Brittany and France and places like that. But you know, in recent years, we have uh, made a shift where a part of our holiday has some sort of spiritual dimension to it. Now, that's not necessarily to say that we we go on retreat as a family, but that, you know, it's funny, we had Father Columba here um, interviewing him a couple of months ago, and he talked about a guy who um, asked the question, how do I bring my faith um, into the workplace? And the whoever answered said, what do you mean, how do you bring your faith into the workplace? Your faith is a part of you. It comes with you. So in the same way, like our holidays should be an extension of who we are and our lives at home and Mm. and trying to show our children this is part of who we are. We don't just Mm -hmm. stop being Mm -hmm. who who our spiritual selves are for those two weeks of our holidays. Yeah, Mm. I think that's a long winded way of. No, that's not. It's not at all. It's a good way of uh, of explaining it. So let's. Let's define what we're not talking about. So you're, we're, we're not talking about a secular holiday, which in and of itself is a good thing. And there's nothing wrong with Christians or Catholics yeah. having a secular holiday. Yeah. That's a good thing. We need a rest and it's good to have a rest. And some people just want to rest. And they're, you know, for example, our son is working in ministry. He doesn't want a holy holiday. He just wants a rest. He just wants to go somewhere and be on his own with his wife and child and not talk to anybody. That's perfectly normal. And it's, very acceptable and it's a good thing we're also not talking about a holy day okay so a holy day of obligation or say a, a, the celebration of a feast a saint's feast day we're not talking about that just to be clear mm-hmm. we're not talking about a retreat mm-hmm. either so a retreat is where we go away on our own or with our family to spend time with god that's not what we're talking about as well to be clear mm-hmm. we're talking about a a holiday which in either in total or in part, is having fun with God. So having fun and uh, and having fun with God. So bringing the secular element into it and also actually exploring our faith in a fun way. Which is like what you talked about, your pilgrimage to... World World Duty. Duty. Sorry, I cut across you. Yeah, no, no, no. The time is interesting because we're just on our way back from a little mini holiday. Are you? Yeah, we were in Belfast last night. Lovely. Um... And we just did a one night hotel break. Yeah. Um, but the kids were so it went to see um Bluey. It's a it's a cartoon and they turned it into a little play Lovely. in the opera house in Belfast. But the kids were so excited 
about a hotel. Yeah. 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 And the elevator was the rocket. <laughs> 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 and, and they were fighting over the key cards, so we had to get extra key cards so they could <laughs> all have one to open the doors. And, yeah. yeah. Um, and it was brilliant. But um, what I was... What I was thinking about as as you were te- as you were teeing it up, mm. um, and I might be jumping around the place. That's okay. Now, but so we um, we went to the Isle of Wight, uh, not September gone, but the September before that. A friend of Trace's became a Benedictine nun out on the Isle of Wight. It's Lovely. an enclosed order. Yeah, and we got the invitation. Yeah, we all got the invitation to go that summer, and. First of all, Trey's just going to go with maybe our eldest boy and we were trying to figure out logistically and then we said, look, to hell with it, we'll all go. Mm-hmm. And it was a drive. We had four at the time, so we had a seven-seater car and space for, let's say, the in the back seat. One of the back seats was flat, mm-hmm. so we were able to pack in mm-hmm. and we drove to Dublin, uh, stayed the night in Dublin, got the ferry from Dublin to Hollyhead, an eight-hour drive from Hollyhead to Portsmouth and then another ferry from Portsmouth to the Isle of Wight. So we left Dublin at eight o'clock sailing and we got to our, uh, we stayed in like a little holiday park, a little chalet thing. Mm. We got there at half eight the following night. So we were 12 and a half hours traveling. Mm. The next day then, we just had a day in the park. The following day, we had the day of the, the vows, mm-hmm. um, which was a very special day. Mm. Um, there was a small crowd, relatively small crowd, a small little church. So mm-hmm. there was, we were the only, f- well, there was one other family there. So there was maybe two families. There was three bishops, a number of other religious and some lay people. So there was a little microcosm of, of the church there. Mm-hmm. And it was a very special day. And we found, like, so we were with them for the day, really. And, you know, they would have had their vespers and their different prayers during the day and at one stage we we lost connell and we found him as you do we, we found <laughs> him in in the church with the other priest doing vespers it was like the finding of our lord wow yeah. um but it was a tough day in some ways but it was yeah. it was it was a very special day the following day then we went to a like a poor man's disney world mm-hmm. that was on the isle of Wight, yeah. and it was just the best day mm-hmm. we've ever had as a family and then we traveled back the the next day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I suppose the point I'm trying to make is like it was it was a very difficult, logistically difficult, mm-hmm. physically difficult uh trip. Mm-hmm. But there was such a good uh purpose to it. Like we were going to support this nun mm-hmm. who was giving her whole life up, you know. Mm-hmm. Um and it just felt like we just had to do this. It was like mm-hmm. a it was a mission. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it gave it gave it, it made the journey so easy. Like mm-hmm. there was some hilarious situations we found ourselves in, but because there was this really great mission, mm-hmm. we all mucked in, and it was it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. And I could contrast that then with some of the other trips we might have taken through the years that had no fate element, and you are fighting with with your car and with mm-hmm. the children and with everything, and you're like, what's the point? Mm-hmm. We could be at home, mm-hmm. yeah. But when you have this mm-hmm. mission, mm-hmm. so if if you're adding in this fate element to your to your holiday, mm-hmm. it it, it changes transforms. everything. Yeah. yeah. Could, would it be fair to say that there's a word that you could describe it as that we haven't mentioned just yet in our list of things that a ho- holy holiday isn't? Mm-hmm. Um, that that sounds to me like it was a pilgrimage. Would you say? You know, sort of like a pilgrimage, uh, like a mission st- stroke pilgrimage to this particular place. Um, yeah. No, maybe not. Yeah. Uh, kind of. Yeah. 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 It's kind a, of. It sounds to me like it was, you know, and yeah. It, it you don't have to agree. Yeah. Well, do, I don't. Do you agree? I, I do, I'd love to know what the definition of a pilgrimage is. Mm. Like, what? It's, it, it's a, it, I suppose a pilgrimage would involve journey, doesn't it? Mm. Mm. Um, I think we were saying that we did use that word. Was yeah. this, is a, this is a sort of pilgrimage. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. There was a bit of everything too, so mm. yeah. Yeah. and that's key, I think. You know, with with children, is you can't expect them to be doing the you know holy things every day. Yeah. You have to have fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. and oh, it's yeah. it's so good, as you said. One of the best days is a family. Like just right. I, what 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 has been our experience of hol- holidays ordinarily? 
you know, Sheena. Um, we're, we're married well, 29 years yeah. this year. And uh, so we're getting old, but like we have a lot, a lot of experience. And some are like, I hear you talking about down through the years. And I'm like, you're just babies. <laughs> like, look at the very. <laughs> <you." laughs> we've aged so much in that time. Don't we? <laughs> you packed a lot in. <laughs> it's funny. Um, like, I, you know, Tony is definitely the adventurous one here. And I, you know, you were kind of hinting at it, you know, um, what's the point in going away? Because it's the same different place yeah. yeah and and i would definitely be of that kind of femme fatale you know it's just too hard it's well, just it, that's me yeah uh, Trey's is the adventurous one. yeah isn't that mad yeah. yeah yeah that's crazy and um but it's good it's good that we're 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 different and mm -hmm. you know we we complement each other so i think the early holidays i would have found really tough really tough in terms of um and then I had this, you know, mental image in my head of what a holiday should be like. It should be going out for dinners and, mm -hmm. you know, coffees and mm -hmm. not me not having to cook. And and it's not that it was, <laughs> you know, it really was never that because yeah. we couldn't afford it. You know, we were doing well to get away. So um, and and every year, you know, um, both our, our mothers would give us money, you know, go and have a nice meal out. And so for me now, I held on to that money because we're going out for dinner one night and it was always a flipping disaster. Because there was so yeah. much pressure oh to have God. a fantastic time. Because yeah. it had to be the best dinner yeah. ever in the yeah. world. And yeah. yeah. But then it, I suppose in, in latter years, I, but the thing I suppose, you know, I would tend to think a lot, internalize a lot of that kind of stuff. But our kids don't remember the stress. They remember that they were brought on holidays, and we brought them to the fake Disney as well. Mm. <laughs> we um, we might have told a little white lie that this was your old Disney. <laughs> <but> we we <laughs> thought they knew that we were actually yeah. telling a white lie, but we discovered. Years recently, later. recently, actually, yeah. some of our kids were saying, yeah, we were in Euro Disney in Paris. And <laughs> we're like, really? <laughs> but, you know, um, that's what they'll remember. Mm. They won't remember mm -hmm. the squabbling in the mm -hmm. car. And mm -hmm. she, yeah. And Did I you pack the dodie? No, you were supposed <laughs> to pack the dodie. Yeah. And, and w like we were. So I grew up going on foreign holidays. And as a teenager and whatever, we went to Spain a couple of times and you know we went to France and whatever and I wanted that for my family so we we, we just did it mm -hmm. and and this is before we were getting involved in that and there was a point whenever it was before World we took Brian and Anna to World Youth Day but we went on these we were just talking about it earlier we went on these holy holidays we started to transition between uh, a secular holiday and oh we'll throw in a bit of faith into it or whatever mm -hmm. do you remember that Sheena? Which, which holiday was that? So we went to Lourdes one year with oh, yeah. families of Nazareth, and then we also went to Poland one year with families of Nazareth, mm -hmm. and it, it was it was during the summer or uh, to Poland. So we went to Zakopane, and it was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was really good for a kid's faith, mm -hmm. and it, I think it was after those two experiences that we realized actually going on a faith holiday or an, a holiday that involves faith. Because when we went to Zakopane, we also spent a, a week in Krakow. We hired mm -hmm. a place in the city and we, we just had a normal holiday. We went for coffees and ice creams. We had meals out. It was dirt cheap. We could afford That's it. That's why we, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and it was, uh, we had a great time. We did. You know? We did, yeah. And, and it, it was after that that we realized, actually, you know what? That's a really important element that we can add to our secular holiday mm -hmm. is to actually have a holy holiday as a, and yeah, as part of it. Mm -hmm. That's a long-winded say, way of saying mm -hmm. what, what, so what is a holy holiday? Well, from I, I think it's it's exactly like you described your weekend, really. It's it's like sandwiching in there some faith dimension or, you know, and there was one time we went on holiday to uh was it Lyon in France? And um it was very funny very actually. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> so we ended up uh, in ours, you know, and mm. the curie of ours and, you know, kind of um there was a friend of one of the kids along with us. And they had never seen uh, an incorruptible yes. body and um, or incorrupt body, and they were just fascinated by it. Who, who was it? The incorruptible. It's yeah. Catherine Labouré. It was actually in Sacre Coeur, but I th I'm not sure if the curé of ours is incorrupt. He could be. He is. Yeah, he, he is incorrupt. Well, he, he, he's uh, in ours, so you probably saw. Him. Yeah, yeah. So we we we, uh, we saw that Sacre Coeur, and there was some somewhere else we went as well, and there were 
three Sister impro- Mary Mary Alcock. Mary Alcock, yeah, or whatever. I don't know. What and name and was, but uh, she was like, "Oh, there's another one." <laughs> it was yeah. just yeah. so random. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was. It. it, it yeah, it was. But I, but I, I, I would like to emphasize that you know you have to go gently with kids, and particularly when your kids get a little bit older and they're teenagers, mm-hmm. like it's like we didn't even announce that we were going to see these places. We just said, "Oh, we'll just stop in here." Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. isn't it a bit like you were saying there, Sheen, at the start about fate in the workplace? How these things need to be very mm-hmm. natural. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and not even you know this is a faith thing. This is a holiday thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. even on the the Disney day, you're saying your prayer in the car. You're yeah. thanking God for the lovely day that mm. that you know you're bringing the faith into every little part yeah. of of the holiday. Yeah, but the whole holiday idea is very interesting. I would have grown up in a house where we didn't holiday. We were farming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. It was yeah. maybe once or twice a year we go for one day to the beach. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Trace, you've great. Uh, you have great holiday experiences from your childhood. And, uh, and we, we were blessed, like both our parents were teachers and um, my, 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 my dad would have, you know, brought us to Lourdes and we would have traveled through France. We would have traveled through a lot of Europe. What but, an experience. Uh, and um, it's so amazing. We didn't really, we did pilgrimage and then we did Euro camp type holidays mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and always quite a lot of, I suppose there was a sense of pilgrimage always, whatever we were doing when we were traveling um, I suppose my memory would have been, yeah, that feeling of we're doing a, f- a fun holiday where, you know, water parks and sunshine and a lot of the times now sandwiches. I think my poor mother mm. now when I look back probably wasn't fun for her. Mm-hmm. We had so much fun. But then if we were passing something, we would go to see a significant church. And I, I love those elements, mm-hmm. but it, it wasn't always the focus mm-hmm. point, yeah, yeah. but it was integrated quite a lot into the holiday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I suppose maybe, you know, in hindsight, there were some holidays that would have really, like, been a turning point for me. Like, little things, like, we stopped in Lisieux and we got to see... Um, Trays. Trays. And yeah. obviously, that was massive for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you You're know, it named was, after it, her. Yeah, I was named after her as a teenager. I, I know some of my siblings were like, oh, my goodness, that was such a boring day. Mm-hmm. Didn't enjoy that. But maybe Mont Saint michel they just had a beautiful experience there, felt close to God. So I suppose... You know, I uh, like I'm thinking even this morning, we just went for a walk with the kids and, you know, our eldest kid was like, this is amazing. And like he was like seeing pigeons and he was like, oh, wow. Oh. And then we had another girl like, I can't walk. This is <laughs> horrendous. Yeah. So I think, you know, you've got different temperaments, like totally. each yeah. hol- whether you're going for just a fun holiday, you are not going to please all your kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of them are going to be miserable some of the time. And some of them, it's going to be, uh, you know, a core memory. They're going to remember yes. it forever. It's going to have a massive influence on them. And I think like the faith element for me, I think it, it just can feel a little bit wasted if you've, as a family, you're all together. Um, if you have an opportunity for your children to feel close to God, to learn more about their faith while they're having fun and the way with their family, they're bonding, mm-hmm. then you should do it. But some of your kids are probably going to be bored, you know, yeah. and some of the kids are going to, it's going to resonate with some, um, some of them might be a wee bit too small. The others might be just r- at the right age. So I think maybe it's mm-hmm. that thing of, you know, sometimes you just have to crack on even mm-hmm. knowing that it's not going to look mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it's not going to look but like the fun holiday. L- but if you're on the fun holiday, it mightn't be fun for some of the kids. Mm-hmm. Regardless. Yeah, regardless. It's, it's going to be same. Yeah. Do-do, different place. Yes. You know, and, yeah. and that's, you're going to have good days and bad days yeah. within that as well. Yes. You yeah. know, as well as the different temperaments in the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, like someone said before, like, we have to, we have to make sure that our fate is attractive. Uh, and and I th- I think of that sometimes when we're on holidays and you know that that we by by doing a cool holiday with a fate element mm. you're making the fate attractive to mm-hmm. the children they're associating all these good times thanking God for it and and I think a key word here let's go is is integration that idea mm-hmm. you're and, dead right and I'm thinking back to the first story there I I told about my two lives. Mm-hmm. And then in Madrid, it was like they were integrated, yeah. mm-hmm. and and I'm hoping that for my children, they won't have that separation between faith and fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That that it's you know, um, mm-hmm. and maybe we, as Irish, we, we we haven't 
because you know we haven't always done that so well you know we've associated fun with anything other than the faith i suppose you know and you know it's a duty something you got to do um and it a lot of it has to do with what we think of god who he is you know he's a harsh god then who wants to be hang around him Mm -hmm. you know um that jansenistic thing that still lives on in all of us so much Mm. yeah about you know anything that's good it feels good must be bad Mm -hmm. yeah interesting Mm -hmm. yeah you're too young to be thinking like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I grew up, my, my dad, God rest him, and he wasn't like that, but like my dad would have been 54 when I was born. Wow. wow. So I did grow up in a kind of an older yeah. mm-hmm. generation of... Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but, but it wouldn't... It, well, it would, we would have been old school, we would have said. We wouldn't have discussed uh, any topic really at home. It was, yeah, yeah. It was it was that era where devotional you know, don't be asking yeah devotional don't be asking those kind of questions mm-hmm. and, and that's good Imagine. that's good of it in and of itself to have the example of the devotional but in this culture it's not enough mm-hmm. yeah you know it's just you're we're just setting our kids up for failure if we're not breaking stuff open for them mm-hmm. in my right. opinion yeah, yeah. because yeah. yeah you're right Tony and and it's a case of because that's what the culture is doing with everything else mm-hmm. so we, that's that's where we need to be at that's yeah. the standard we need to be at mm-hmm. yeah. So did I hear you guys saying earlier you're thinking of a uh, future holiday somewhere? Craig Lodge? Yeah, we're, we're booked into Craig Lodge now in the summer. It was one of your friends kind of recommended. What was, well, what, what's Craig Lodge? I, I know what it is, but I want uh, I want you to explain to people who maybe don't Tony know. Tony has just come back from I've Craig just come back from Craig Lodge. Oh, well. Yeah, I had a great time there. But you better. Yeah. Well, I I, we haven't it. been yet. Yeah, um, I haven't been. Yeah, I have a lovely sister-in-law who is uh, Scottish, so she would... And I have a brother that has visited, but um, I think it's very, it's very much steeped in um, the Medjugorje. Um, maybe very much so. Yeah, yeah. yeah, very much so came out of Medjugorje. Of prayer that they were there in the 1983 time. as kids. The, the kids were there in 1983 and they're all in their late 50s now, these kids. The parents are still alive. So the kids came back from, as teenagers came back from Medjugorje, thought it was amazing, dragged the parents uh, over. The parents came back and they had this hunting lodge that was uh, that, that they were inviting people up into the highlands from England or whatever. They take them hunting, and that was their business. They came back, and they decided that they felt God not decided. They felt God asking them to turn their hunting lodge into a house of prayer. And long story short, here we are on forty years on. This, I think it's going thirty three years. It took them a few years. It's going 30, 30 years, and it's this beautiful place of prayer where families, their third generation or fourth generation, the grandparents are still alive. The f- grandfather is in 92, and I got a hug from him. And so there was wh- while I was there, there was perpetual adoration, 24 hours, seven days a week. During Mass one day, I got a hug from the grandfather, and I, and I just thought to myself, God has just hugged me during Mass. Wow. I'm going up to receive... Holy Communion ten minutes later, and I'm still bawling my eyes oh, out. Wow! And like it, it's like I went there yeah. for a retreat, and I, I wanted to ask God, does He still want me to do this thing with Net? You know, and I, I needed to be open to mm-hmm. to hearing what it is He had to say, and I felt I needed to go to a place like that where it was just steeped in intense prayer, where people are actually listening to God and lay people as well. You know, who are, who are listening to God, and I'd never been and I wanted to go. There was the the curiosity and the adventure element as well. It's also time out, though, you know, and quiet time. And, you know, and, and a part of me envied Tony when he came back and he mm. said, you know, that he he was crying. And I was like, gosh, wouldn't it be nice to go somewhere where you can have a big cry? Yeah. Like, and nobody's nobody's watching you. We need yeah. to find that man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and get a hug. Yeah, yeah, get a hug. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's what, yeah. I, like, I'm, I'm just like, God the Father has just hugged me. Mm. You know, and he has a, he has a, he's, Callum McFarlane Barrow is his name. Mm. He's 92 years of age. He has uh, His family just talk about it. He's a ministry of hugging. And uh, like, I'm not the only person who's experienced that. He spends all his life in prayer. His wife is still alive. The two of them are amazing. And you just, like, he looked at me in the eye. This is a few days previous. He looked at me in the eye, and it was just one look. I'm like, this dude is holy. And wow. there's holy, yeah. and then there's freaking really holy. Wow. And he was really holy he still climbs them out i think he I've is seen yeah him that's featured him. actually yeah, yeah. another on yeah, another yeah. time amazing I, yeah, yeah absolutely amazing and god yeah. is doing something through that man mm-hmm. there's an anointing on him i wasn't talking to his wife at all but i was just sitting looking at him and he looked me in the eye and that was it wow. you know and then i got i got the hug 
Mad. And it was like Thomas is smiling over there. He's very familiar with Craig Lodge. Uh, Have you been, Thomas? He looks like a man that's got a hug. Could I ask you a quick question about sure. cause when we when we talk about this the what's the intention on, on going on some of these trips? Yeah. It is so, so that our children will have friends, hopefully, when they get yeah. older, that are in their fate. Absolutely. That, Absolutely. That, that they'll have great peers. What was year, because, and I suppose it comes back into the idea of, of schools, and I know your kids went to go to Secular school, schools, ordinary schools. schools. Yeah. 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 For ye you now, like, was, was that on your radar about trying to tee your kids up with with friends in their in the choosing these holidays is that what you mean would would that have been part of it like was yeah, that because cause i suppose that would be our not just with holidays but we think a lot about this about how can we try and mm-hmm. without being too uh contrived yeah. how can we try and help our children arrive at a place where when they're in their early teens mm-hmm. or, or mm-hmm. through their life where they have a group of other you know faith yeah. friends yeah. mm-hmm and, and that to, to help them through those very difficult years, yeah. especially. Yeah. What was your experience? Gosh, that? that's a great question. Yeah. Well, I, I would, I would say the word that you're using, contrived, could also be, you, you could also use the word intentional. Mm. Okay. Yeah. You know, like, and but the, mm-hmm. there's an. Yeah, sorry, go on. <laughs> I totally cut across it. I'm really sorry. My a friend pulled me on that. And he's like, you know, you cut across your wife sometimes. And I'm like, thank you for that. I needed yeah, to hear that. Yeah. So apologies. Anyway, it's okay. Go on ahead. Forgive you. Um. Yeah, like I, I know they're two different words and they mean different things, but you have to be intentional. Like if you want your kids to not feel weird, and we've said this many times on the podcast, you have to surround them with like minded people, mm-hmm. you know, who whose parents think the same way that you do. Mm-hmm. And they don't always think exactly the same way and they may not have the same uh, discipline parenting style or you know Mm -hmm. they may allow certain devices that you don't want to allow but in general Mm -hmm. you're on the same path Mm -hmm. you want your kids to get to heaven Mm -hmm. um so so i would say we were very intentional about a lot of things we did in our lives you know we like we held things here in our home for years so that families came here and uh, like prayer groups and things like that, you know, and family days and um, and we we drove them to youth groups. Well, we and I, and I think what Joe was getting at, I think you're both saying the same thing, but I think the difference between contrived and intentional is integrated. And yeah. it was integrated, like it was intentional it, it, and it was integrated mm-hmm. and it was it it, it uh, if we weren't integrated if we weren't living our faith in a way that mm-hmm. this was kind of just an add-on different thing mm-hmm. then it would be contrived would you say it worked and that's a great question and you, you should have a podcast if you were back again <laughs> 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 if you were back again what would you have done differently oh great on, question. just on that yeah yeah area of yeah. um trying yeah. to get Patron we totally didn't tee this up, but this is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Do you want to answer? Uh, I can answer, but yeah, uh, I'm, I, I, I think it's better if you answer. I it. think, um, you know, you don't want to sound facetious and say yes, it worked. Mm. Our kids are all in their faith mm. for now, and we're very grateful. Um, but we don't know what's ahead of any of them, and we still have some who have yet to come along. So yeah. we don't want to sound yeah. prideful or anything. You know, our kids are freaking amazing. Yeah. Like yeah. straight up, they're yeah. amazing and we're super proud of them. Yeah. And they're in their faith and they've married people in the faith. And if that makes people feel bad, mm. I'm sorry. Yeah. But that is our reality. Yeah. And it's, it's, yeah. uh, we're not saying that as different uh, uh, personalities here. Yeah. <laughs> we're not saying I'm a really abrasive person, as you can tell. Yeah. But the, the reality is, yeah. I am so proud of them. And it's yeah. not like it comes to a point where they own it themselves. Mm. And it's that at that point that you referred to in the early teens where they have to make a choice mm. and we have to be there to allow them to rebel in a safe environment at home mm. or in an environment that is actually going to be supportive of their faith. Because if they're going to rebel and we're causing them to rebel by our by our in non-integration, mm-hmm. you know, our, our, our lack of, like if Sheena and I are fighting and we're not actually apologizing in front of the kids or if we're saying one thing and doing something else, you know, and not acting in a way that is 
integrous to our faith, then they're going to rebel because that's mm. just what people do. They they can they can spot it's, a falsehood. It's fake, and yeah. we are not great people, but we were good at this, mm. and and this is well, we had the grace. We had the grace, yeah. definitely the grace, and plus yeah. we were surrounded by net missionaries, mm-hmm. and like. But even before that, Tony, like we, we before that, we would have um, we had some great community in, in the area here, yeah. and they also wanted to bring their kids up like minded. And we we had older people who actually showed us yeah. the way, but and, but and I corrected I, us actually. You know, they the kids would have we sought out where there were camps, faith camps for them to go to, and we you know drove them all around the country. And th- to be fair, they were open to going to them, you know. Um, yeah. And then I suppose the holidays then, you know, I think I think before those holidays happened, those seeds were already planted in our daily life. Mm-hmm. Back to integration again. Yeah. It was part of our mm-hmm. normal life to go to different yeah. faith events. So to put that into, interject that into the holiday wasn't, Weird. And and yeah. we were no, we were a normal family as well. Like we mm-hmm. we played football. The kids went to football, Gaelic, you know, Irish dancing, all that sort of thing. Like we did the normal stuff. Mm-hmm. We went Nearly to scouts. Killed me. Yeah. I, I, up and down the road. Piano, I piano. think it's the single yeah. most stressful thing is the running. Like mm-hmm. the faith shouldn't turn us away f- or, or turn yeah. us in on ourselves or getaways mm-hmm. us into this small community of people who are you know, hiding away from the world mm-hmm. and not actually integrating. And we're meant to be salt and light. How much salt does it actually take to flavor a meal? It takes very, very little. And if you put too much salt in there, the meal is destroyed. Mm-hmm. And I'm not suggesting that there can ever be too many Christians, but it, it's, uh, I'm, you can tell I'm a little bit passionate about this. Like we, we are, you're dealing with broken humanity here, certainly for sure. And like by your human condition, you're broken as well. But by some grace, we were, we, we've been very, very fortunate. And I remember specifically about the, the you know, your, the O'Callaghan family, like you guys were normal as well and you were cool. Mm-hmm. And it was, and that is really, really important, not to try and be cool for coolness sake, but just to try and be normal and integrated. Yeah. And, and, and not cool was the word I was going to use for your And channel. that's yeah. why, that's why yeah. we went over to visit you guys was because you were, your yeah. family were a little bit ahead of, you know, our children. And it was for our kids to see. But funny, I remember asking Tony when we start when we started having children, like, because to be fair to Tony and Angela, you know, they brought up like yourselves. Yeah, you can be so proud of of the seven of you. Do you know? Mm. Um, I was gonna say like, how did you do it? Mm. And and his thing was he would have encouraged them to be critical thinkers, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. not to just accept everything yeah. you hear, mm-hmm. r- right or wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, think things through and and. Um, I think that's another, that was another. Yeah, yeah. To know that you don't just this is it now and yeah. you believe because you have to believe because yeah. I thought we had as well recently where, where you try and set things up for your kids, just that realization that just like we 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 did, you have to find your own faith. You know, you you can't just be given. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. You can't just you can't just be say like this is the faith. Mm. Um. That's Lola now because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a baby crying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we can take a break. We, or we can take a break. Do you want to bring her in? Do you want to? Do, do you want to chat away? And I'll come back in once I've settled. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. bring her in. Bring her in. Do you do you need to feed her? Yes. Yeah, yeah, bring her in. Yeah. Like we, yeah. if you have a wrap or anything, just yeah. bring her in, Trace. Yeah. 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 So we're just we're just talking about a rise there, and there's great speakers actually. Father Columba Jordan is going to be there, who we've previously mm-hmm. had on the show. Wonderful. Uh, absolutely amazing. And Martin and Mary Moran, who we've also had on the show as well. So Martin and Mary have raised five kids in their faith. And they're they're all, every one of them is married now at this stage. And they have a lot of wisdom to give. And so they're giving some of the talks as well. And it's fun as well. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just mm-hmm. talk, 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 let's be holy. It's like a couple of talks, go and have a break. Enjoy your family. Go out <laughs> for dinner. Do whatever you want. Yeah. But, you know, it's a bit of both, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I always think you can put a day on either side. It's such a great location as well. Mm-hmm. Tremor is fantastic. Oh my goodness, you Google around the amount of other things you can do. Yeah, if you're uh, worried about that element, you can definitely add it in. Yeah, but you're going to get fed. Yeah, you know? for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Definitely. And uh, lunches are all laid on and yeah. and whatever. The interesting thing is, Joe was asking about you know about our kids. How do we manage to bring them up in the faith? And part of it was things like that where they had friends that they knew were in the faith you know, um, through events that they would see at different events and whatever. Mm-hmm. And, uh, 
yeah, it was, it was, that's, that's part of the reason they have faith because they realized that they weren't alone, you know, mm -hmm. that there were other families that were like the ones that they had and, uh, that it was a good thing. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but I think you've, you know, hit the nail on the head, you know, you're going to get fed spiritually there. Mm. And as parents, it's, it's actually vital that you, your batteries are recharged mm. spiritually regularly, you mm. know, and, and when you're in the thick of it. And you can't get away. Why not bring them with you and and get fed? Yes. You know, regardless of of the effect it's going to have on them, mm -hmm. it's good for you so as true. a couple. And the kids know? are minded so as part of it. Like so, you so you you bring your five kids. Like who doesn't want a break? Where somebody's minding your kids for you. Yeah. You know, like and their kids are getting faith fun element yeah. as well. You know, mm -hmm. so it's not just mommy and daddy who are talking about this Jesus fella. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to be fed. Mm -hmm. Don't until you're being fed. Yeah. 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 Until, yeah. 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 And Bishop Fancy will be involved as well. Bishop Fancy Colon. Yeah. So we're up on the hour mark now at this stage. Mm. What What have we left to talk about, or what do we need well, to talk about I, that we I haven't think, talked about? I think it would be good. Um, you know, you're actually the youngest couple we've had on, so it'd be lovely to hear. What's what the Lord's doing in your life now these days or, you know, the way you go through mm. seasons in your prayer life or something you've read or, you know, something that's kind of hit you. And we can go first and you can have a think about it. Or yeah, yeah, let's do that. You go first. Oh, gosh. Um, well, actually, yeah, so I, I'm doing a, a bit of studying now. I've had time to go back and do a bit of studying and... The course I'm doing at the moment is uh, moral's, moral theology, moral and spiritual theology. But the stuff I'm learning is blowing my mind. And I, I feel like every parent should learn this before they have kids because it's, you know, it's all about, you know, the, the effect that the will has on our decisions and reason and, and then our emotions, you know, and oh. and how our... Oh. No, it's not. It's real. It's Augustine and Aquinas, like, yeah. but it's new for me. Right. Oh, I, it's something that's just going to be hard to... Uh, I don't know if I ever really... Yeah. I don't know if I ever really had had time to think about it, you know, or... But, but, but I suppose the thing that I'm... I'm learning is, as a parent... And I'm not, I'm not, you know, when I've, when I've vocalized this to sub, a couple of people, they're like, oh, but you, you know, you did a great job. And I'm not trying to say that, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm hard on myself, but if I'd known some of this stuff, I would have done things a little bit differently. And, and the thing that I've, I'm most impacted about is the effect of habit. The effect that good habits can have on your life and the effect of habit on growing in virtue, you know, um, and, and there's a couple of different things I would have changed, you know, with, with regard to teaching that to my kids, you know, even the simple thing of like, get up and make your bed every morning, mm -hmm. simple things of like mm -hmm. discipline and habits to, yeah. So that's, mm -hmm. that's really, now I have to be careful. I don't become overly scrupulous about I'm this because yeah. I can, yeah, win in my head too much about it, but just, yeah. I just think it's fantastic. And you know, when you get a new car, you get a manual that tells you how to run the car. Yeah. When you become a parent, yeah. you have nobody yeah. to tell you how yeah. to do it apart yes. from your your own parents or, or example. Yeah. But anyway, that's my yeah. What What thing. is the Lord saying to me? He's He's I don't want to be purified. It's painful. He's purifying me. I don't like it. But I know what's good for me. And I have no choice. If I had a choice, I would say, no, sorry, mm. can't. But I have no choice. He's purifying me. And it's I, I'm suffering. And it's not nice. Uh, but I'm making the best of it. And he's God. And I'm giving it to him. Um, I'm crawling up onto that altar every day at Mass in my, you know, um, metaphysically. And uh, along with himself, I'm crawling up there and offering up whatever suffering I'm going through. So that's that's what's going on with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> smiling. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. Uh, well, there you go. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have mine ready to go because uh, we, we were talking about it earlier, yeah. and it's that idea of vocation, 
and uh, I, I'm just at this moment in time really um, it's really sinking in that my vocation is a husband and a father and it doesn't need to be anything else I don't need to um, start any mission or group or anything outside of the family right now like we've five kids under eight and you know an overworked wife <laughs> and like sometimes to be like a an excellent husband and an excellent father it it's not glamorous it's not seen but yeah it's it's where all the good stuff is like there's no glory you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. um and thank god god has been revealing to me over the years you know this is enough it's like the saint trace thing of keeping your car corner of the garden beautiful mm-hmm. this is enough it, it's not even enough it's it's massive mm-hmm. and and that if i can be a, a great father and a great husband that's going to go out and change the world you know potentially more than uh, a rosary group every sunday night no not like yeah, that might know. be needed but you know uh, i just feel at that at this moment in time my focus needs to be here maybe in time Hmm. there'll be time for other things Mm -hmm. um but that this is this is more than enough and and lean into that so that's where i'm at amen well done joe trace what about you Ah. just pull pull us in there i think i think something similar because we we actually had a chat about this during the week funny and we had a conversation years ago. I had listened to um, a Catholic mother, Jennifer Fulweiler, mm-hmm. and she did a TED talk about, you know, stop hiding behind your kids and the church needs mothers and they need to be proactive. And in that season of that time, that stirred up a lot in me. And, you know, it wasn't long after that, you know, my she talked about the blue flame. Yes. You know, yeah. for the mothers and the Catholic mother, what's your blue flame? And you need to fan it. At that time for me, it was, you know, faith formation. I Sunday school was on my heart. I wanted to do something around that area. And I don't know, was that three years, four years ago? And I'm in a very different season now where yeah. suddenly it's, I'm in the thick of it with the kids and they very much feel like, no, this is my ministry. I've always been in youth ministry, but I do feel like in the last couple of weeks, it's like being hidden in here with my family mm. is my dream. Mm. And um, sometimes I feel like, you know, you the desire to almost justify yourself, justify your z- existence. And, yeah. you know, um, maybe with with your own experiences or your, you know, par- past work history, you feel like you need to be proactively out there doing something. Mm-hmm. But I think just, I think we're leaning into just trusting that it's important right now is the time to get it right with our kids. We'll never get this time back. And like you said, to, to do that as well as we possibly can mm-hmm. you know like all, all the things you're just saying there and I'm thinking gosh you know to read up on morality or to learn more about your your faith um you know um to try and strengthen our own faith but um try and form the faith in our own children and try to make it a loving home try to be a real authentic Christian home that's Good feels for like you. enough yeah. for now and just yeah. have to lean into that where yeah. we're meant to be right now and that's yeah yeah, that's good the dream. Well, the Lord's we're here now, life so was we hidden for a long time. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Trey's and Joseph Lennon, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show, and thank you for coming. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. It's free. Share with your family and friends. Enjoy.